guys. Uh, today we're going to talk about properties of kites. Um, this is where I get to have my bitter old man moment. Like when I was a kid, we didn't really talk about kites. Uh, um, it wasn't really a shape that was kind of on our radar, but they do have some specific properties. Um, it should be a pretty quick one today because it's it's a little bit more limited than things like uh, parallelograms or ROMs that we've been talking about. Uh, first of all, it's called a kite because it looks like a kite. Um, probably the most straightforward, much more straightforward than a parallelogram or a square or a rectangle. It looks like a kite, so we call it a kite. Um, I know you guys live in the 21st century, so you've probably never flown a kite, and uh, there's probably a kite app or something like that. But so you know, back in the back in the 90s, you can go out there with your kite and have a good time on a windy day. Um, so without further ado, so what is a, what is a kite? By definition, it's quadrilateral. It's a four-sided shape where you have consecutive sides that are congruent. Okay, so these two sides are congruent and these two sides are congruent. Okay, excuse me, uh, pull my nose before I keep sniffling for the entire video. Um, so your two consecutive sides are congruent. Now, let's think about what that means. Let's draw a line from A to C, okay? And uh, let's take a look at what this is. Now, triangle ABC up here on the top is now an isosceles triangle, yes? So we know a couple things, right? We know, say, for example, that this angle over here, angle BCA, is congruent angle BAC, right? So we know something there. We also know... The same thing is true if we kind of flip it upside down, right? This angle right here is congruent to this angle right here. Um, if we take it a step further, we connect B and D. Uh, what you should see is that we have four right triangles. We have one, two, three, four right triangles. Um, and what do we know now? We know these are... These are bisectors. I'll draw a third symbol up here, right? I also know that these down here are going to be congruent as well, okay? So we've got all these different congruent things. Um, because there's right triangles, obviously they're going to have a focus on some things related to right triangles. So that means namely the Pythagorean theorem. So. Let me go over an example of something you might see. Let's say, all right, this is a kite. Okay, now that's all they have to tell you. It's a kite or they just draw those, those symbols and you have to know it's a kite, okay? And I tell you, for example, this is uh, three, this is four, um, and this say, for example, is, oh, I don't know, eight. And I say they want, what's the perimeter? Okay, now again, the perimeter is just distance around the outside, right? So what do you have to do? Well, again, you have to recognize that here, this is a right triangle right here. And we also recognize that this is a right triangle out here. So we can find this side, right? We can say that, you know, three squared plus four squared is equal to side BC squared, right? Three, four here. And we could also say three squared plus eight squared is equal to side CD squared, right? So again, A, B, and then so long side will be the hypotenuse down here, right? A little extra right angle in there if you guys need it. Okay, so here you guys should notice it's three, four, five, right? So this would be nine, 16, BC squared, 9 and 16 is going to be 25. And again, the square root of BC and the square root of 25, what are we going to say? BC is 5, right? So again, so now we know something. We know this is 5 and this is 5. Okay, over here on the other side, 3 squared is 9, 8 squared is 16, and that's CD squared. 9 plus 16... Um, Oh, Jesus, don't, don't let me do that. 8 squared is 64. Oh, boy. I'm looking bad. I was going to say, this can't be right. Okay, 8 squared is 64. You guys are all yelling at the screen, I'm sure. Okay, so 64 and 9 is 73. So CD 
squared. So again, what's CD going to be? CD is going to be equal to the square root of 73. Square root of 73. Square root of 73. So if they want you to add this all together, you have 5 plus 5 plus square root of 73 plus the square root of 73. Well, this is 10. That's the easy part, right? And then you're going to break out your calculator, right? It also will say 10 plus 2 times the square root of 73. You can do 73 plus 73 if you want. I did 2 times 73. You're going to find out the perimeter is 27.09, we'll call it. Okay, so there's one, just, you know, one more thing I'll show you guys, 27.09. Okay, so be your perimeter, okay, and they could ask you questions like that. Um, the other type of question they're mainly going to focus on is something like this. Well, again, if we know this is true, then we know if we draw this, this one first, right, we know that these two triangles, B, A, D, and B, C, D. These are congruent. If you kind of look, if you reflect it over, these are the same triangle. Yes, side, side, side congruence, side, side, side congruence. So what are we looking at? That the angles opposite from one another are going to be congruent. So back on our main triangle up here, oh boy. And it's all gotta go, okay. And... can't do it okay um if we just kind of remove this we just have this here again we know that angle a and angle c are congruent again one side congruent two side congruent and they share the two triangles share this one in the middle here right so we know that this angle has to be congruent to this angle okay but they didn't give us quite enough information but we know a couple other things right we know that this whole quadrilateral b a d c uh, a, B, C, D, however you want to say it. A, B, C, D. It has 360 degrees, right? So let's start by saying, well, there's 50 taken there and 66 taken there. So what's 360 minus 50 minus 66, okay? Again, you can add these two together if you'd like. But again, let's see. we got 360 minus 50 minus 66, okay? So it's 244. So we got 244... 244 degrees left, okay? So A, so angle A is congruent to angle C, and I need to split 244 between them. So what am I going to do? Let's take 244 and divide it by 2. So what am I going to get? 122 for angle A and 122 for angle C. Okay? So again, what are you going to do? You're going to see what's left over when we subtract from 360. So take these away from 360, see how many degrees you have left to split between these two angles. And since they're congruent, you're going to literally, you're going to divide it into two equal parts. Okay, so same thing here. Let's take a look. They want to know what's the measure of angle F. Okay, well, again, we know that angle F and angle D are congruent. So let's say I have 360, and from that I'm going to take away 113. Um, oops. And uh, 129. If you wanted to, you could just add those two together first and then subtract from 360. That's fine. Um, this is almost like doing the distributive property. So we got 360 minus 113 minus 129. Okay. We got 118 degrees left. Okay. So we got 100. 18 degrees left over. Okay, so again, what's 118 degrees divided by two? Well, that's going to be uh, 59 degrees, right? So, does that tell you there's going to be 59 degrees here and 59 degrees here? All right. Um, so, is quadrilateral T U V W is a kite? What is S W? Okay, so again, they're not going to come out and tell you a lot of these things, but you do have to recognize that. This is a right angle. Now, I've been warning you guys for the last week or so that you can't just assume that everything is congruent. 
What's congruent here are these, but they don't, you don't have either one of them, so it doesn't really help you. What you have to use is you're going to have to use this right triangle here. So really, this is a Pythagorean theorem problem. They just kind of hit it in, inside a kite. So what am I going to say? Another 33 squared plus SW squared is equal to 65 squared. Um, now, again, make sure you're solving for the right side. This is not the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse has to be by itself on the other side of the equation. So, again, if you want to do it all as one step, that's fine. But I would say 33 squared is that, and 65 squared is that. So, again, what are we going to say? 1089 and 4225. 1089, 4225, SW squared. Okay. Again, now let's solve. We'll subtract 1089 from both sides. Thirty-one, thirty-six. Okay, and last step, let's take the square root from both sides. And we should get 56. Okay. Um, I believe most of the answers you got on IXL are nice. Okay, they're 56. Make sure there's no degree sign there too, guys. It's 56, no degrees. Okay. Um, I believe most of the answers to give you guys are integers, so no big deal there. Uh, again, they want to know what's VW. Right, again, so we know that uh, 30 squared plus VW squared is equal to 34 squared. Thirty squared is that. Thirty-four squared is that. So I have eleven fifty-six nine hundred. Eleven fifty-six nine hundred plus VW squared. We're going to subtract nine hundred from both sides. We find that VW squared is equal to two hundred and fifty-six, uh, and you can put it in your calculator. But the square root of two hundred fifty-six is equal to 16. Okay. All right, so anyway, guys, take a look at those. Um, again, you might have noticed something uh, about this one. I don't want to get too far into it, but this is an 8, 15, 17. Um, again, give some of these a try. That's about all you need to know for today. And I will see you guys Monday morning in class, 9, 15. Okay, good luck, guys.